Testosterone increases red blood cells case study. This is very important for everyone in the world to understand when you're on testosterone and or steroids, you're going to see an increase in red blood cells. Every man, red cells go up, but it may be not significant for some men. Others, it's going to be significant and clinically potentially dangerous. So please, today, I am presenting a case study of an example of a case that I saw recently, and I'm working this man up. I changed some information, of course, to protect this man's identity. So this is what happens. We're going to talk about what it is from androgens. It's called androgen-endosed erythrocytosis that leads to secondary polycythemia. talk about it in the end, I'll talk about it now. The reference ranges are very important for hemoglobin and hematocrit. There is discrepancies and controversy on this and not all labs or physicians and lab experts agree, but I could tell you that the upper limit normal for hematocrit is 54% and the upper limit normal for hemoglobin is 18 grams per deciliter. Now, some men will feel poorly underneath this. Some physicians don't agree with this. Please be very careful. Medicine is an art and a science. Let's start with a case. This is a 45-year-old gentleman that has come to see me after already been on testosterone replacement for two years by his primary care doctor that's a very good doctor and certainly did the best that she could to help this man. His past medical history is significant as he is overweight, hypertensive, hyperlipidemic, he has prediabetes, he has obstructive sleep apnea that I discovered, and he has atrial fibrillation. He's on statin medicine, metformin, he's on valsartan for blood pressure, and Xarelto because he has atrial fibrillation and he is rate controlled and he is anticoagulated. On testosterone with his PCP, his hemoglobin went up to over 20 grams per deciliter, that's significant, and his hematocrit breached up over 61%, that's significant, you don't see that often. And he was only on half a milliliter a week of testosterone scipionate 200 milligrams per milliliter concentration, so he was taking 100 milligrams a week, intermuscularly injected only. Now, prior to starting testosterone, his physicians noted that he had an upper limit normal hematocrit and hemoglobin. Hemoglobin was 17.1 grams per deciliter, hematocrit 50.2. Now, that's normal but it's definitely upper limit normal. And that's before starting testosterone. So when you see that, you know it's gonna go up further, you know something's gonna go on. So what happens? His physician sends him to appropriately hematologist. Hematologist phlebotomizes him twice over the period of about a month. And then they recheck labs and his hemoglobin dropped down to 17.4 grams per deciliter, hematocrit down to 48%. Now, his iron studies were run at that time and they were essentially all within normal limits. Interestingly enough, his ferritin, which is an indication of storage iron, was low at 61 nanograms per milliliter. The scale is 20 to 380. His percent saturation is 31%, scale 15 to 20 to 60% very relevant and very important information. His PCP at that time checked for polycythemia vera with JAK2, genetic identification studies, and other hematological tests, but they failed, amazingly enough, with all humility, they failed to check hereditary hemochromatosis genes. This is a Caucasian man. At this time, his physicians 
discontinue testosterone replacement and they give him a few more months and they recheck labs and they're about the same. Now, meanwhile, during this time period, the man's testosterone is going very low organically once again and he's feeling very poorly. Um, he talks to the physicians and he asked if they could try to start some other agent like Clomid or human chorionic neurotropin to support him and increase his testosterone. The physicians were uncomfortable with this, but one of the physicians did feel comfortable trying Clomid. And he apparently was on Clomid for about six months and he felt horribly on Clomid. Uh, his testosterone did go up, but not very much. Not sure what the dose they actually used, but he didn't feel well. And his hematocrit did go up, but not that much. So his red cells did go up, but not that much. At this time, he leaves his physicians, as far as having them manage testosterone replacement, and he starts his own testosterone. He starts 0.4 milliliters every six days. He feels that is going to be a safe uh, dose. And then he comes to see me uh, about two uh, to three months later. Now, when I did my history and physical, he told me all this. He was, uh, it's important to trust, have trust with the physician. He told me this, and I knew right away we had to pay attention to this. So I rechecked his labs, and under my initial care, his hemoglobin was back up to 19 grams per deciliter. His hematocrit was 56.5%. Once again, he's, he's back up there. He's up way too high again. Ion studies, interestingly enough, are within normal limits. I check hereditary hemochromatosis gene study, and we found it. He's homozygous for the HS3D mutation, homozygote, two genes. It represents 1% of the population that have hereditary hemochromatosis. I send him for obstructive sleep apnea, and he has significant obstructive sleep apnea. It was not treated and we plan on initiating CPAP or BiPAP treatment. His testosterone, when he was self-treating himself, when I checked at nadir dose before the injection, that would be the, just the low point, his testosterone total was 664 nanograms per deciliter. Perfectly normal. His lipid studies, LDL is elevated, 129. Now he was on statin at this time, obviously not enough and his HDL was low at 22. Uh, interestingly enough, his ultra-sensitive estradiol, 88 picograms per milliliter, significantly elevated. So, at this time, I called up his prior hematologist. He felt comfortable with that. And we had our discussion, and I brought to the hematologist's attention in a politically correct manner that I discovered that this man has the rare genetic mutation, homozygote, for hereditary humor chromatosis. And this is why he's so sensitive to even a little bit of androgen. She agrees, and that this is indefinitely one of the reasons, if not the main reason, in addition to sleep apnea and sensitivity to androgens, that this man is elevating in red blood cells and has marked polycythemia. Then we get into the amazing aspects of where I am today and why I present this case. So we agree that he does not have a manifestation of hereditary humor chromatosis and a danger when he's off androgens, but when he's on, he's sensitive and he skyrockets and his hematocrit and hemoglobin are elevated and concerningly elevated. Now, we talk about the data. We talk about what do we do for a man like this. There's no data. That's why I'm presenting this and that's why I continue to do my studies and focus in the top 10 of my most important aspects that I'm concerned with is this, how androgens relate with men and increase red blood cells. There's no data that it leads to stroke or heart attack, but we're concerned for that. 
these red blood cells are so elevated that it is hemoconcentration potentially. It is marked an increase and it's polycythemic and you have to worry that a man will be hypercoagulable and have a stroke or a heart attack. Not to mention when men are this high they feel terrible. They have headaches, blurry vision, night sweats, severe malaise and fatigue, shortness of breath. It's very hard to differentiate this from coronary disease or heart failure. At this time his hematologist was very professional with me but said that she did not know what to do and she thought that she did speak to her colleagues and responded back to me days later called me several times and thought that the best thing to do for this man is to discontinue the offending agent indefinitely that would be saying to this man stop testosterone forever and that's where I sit with this man. I did stop testosterone. I phlebotomized him. And now I sit with this man. And my plan is that we are staying together. We had to stop testosterone for the moment. We had to phlebotomize him. I'm treating his sleep apnea. I'm asking him, please lose weight. Now, the future, what we will do is we will monitor him closely. We will try HCG. He asked for that in the past. He came up with that. And it's amazing that patients come up with ideas. These are, this is a bright man. He's not a physician, but he has the internet and he's bright and he's concerned. So he thought, let's try Clomid. Let's try HCG. He tried Clomid. It didn't work well for him. So he asked the physicians to try human corneac gonadotropin. They didn't feel comfortable. That's okay. That's how it goes. Physicians, you can't force them to, to do anything. You, everyone has to feel comfortable. This is why I'm studying and I am the world's testosteronologist because looking at men on androgens is so complicated. It's so complicated. Look at this. I don't know what to do for this. No one knows what to do. Do you stop the offending agent and let this man wallow and live with significant low testosterone and a very poor quality of life? Not to mention, he could be at risk for worsened coronary disease because he has significant low testosterone. Is, the, is that the answer? There's no answer right now. We don't know what to do. This, and by the way, this is quite rare because this man is a homozygote. He has two genes. And I'll talk about in the end what I discovered for the men that I see, about 10% or more are carriers of this gene, hereditary hemochromatosis. And they, too, are significantly elevated when they even just use a slight amount of testosterone. So, in the future, when this man comes down to normal, which he will within a month or two, we're going to try human chorionic gonadotropin. It will be amazing to see if this increases his endogenous testosterone at the same time <clears throat> does not increase his red cells too much. And we can phlebotomize him. But we did learn, and I know that, and the hematology doctors agree, that the problem is just phlebotomizing patients looking the other way and just phlebotomizing, phlebotomizing, you get a paradoxic, very low level of ferritin and percent saturation. The patients look like they have iron deficiency anemia. So their hematocrits are elevated and hemoglobins. You could bring that down by giving blood, whole blood, sure. And then what happens is you drain them and the percent saturations and ferritins can be very, very low. We do not know the significance of this. And that's why I bring this case to you. Very important case. What also we can do for this man is we could microdose, really microdose, which is give him really small doses, almost 0.1, <clears throat> very tiny doses, every day, every other day. And is it possibly related that we can just get his free testosterone into the normal range, slightly increased over the average, so he feels good in his brain and we don't get this side effect? I don't know. Nobody knows. 
interesting facts that relate to this case and that I'll be working on. Hereditary humor chromatosis is a very common condition for Caucasian men. The carrier state is about 10% of Caucasian men. It's autosomal recessive disorder of iron metabolism. It leads to iron overload in the organs, in the heart, the liver, the pancreas, the joints, even the testicles causing low testosterone. It's possibly why this man actually had low testosterone. The take home message from this clinical case is that red blood cells will go up on even small doses of testosterone placement, not to mention steroids, real steroids, dacodrobin, equipoise. Everyone knows, it seems like for decades, that some of these steroids really increase red blood cells. <clears throat> well, that's on top of testosterone. What does it do? It can hurt you. It certainly can hurt you. Do you have <clears throat> a state where you actually have this disease and you're giving it testosterone like this man? Not even steroids, just testosterone. Are you a carrier? Here's what I want people to do. You have to go see a physician, but if you don't have a physician, this is strictly for education. You need to check your vital signs. You need to check your heart. You need to check a CBC. That's where you're gonna see the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. You need to check iron studies. You'll know when you check iron studies and the CBC baseline off testosterone and steroids, and of course, on testosterone and steroids. Please see uh, a board certified internist or a hematologist Check your genes for this hereditary humor chromatosis, not to mention there's other genes for polycythemia that can't be missed. Sleep apnea is huge. Sleep apnea leads to so much sensitivity and increase in polycythemia that I've seen this for years. So I treat all these together. I take care of the man. I care for the man and I treat all these together and monitor a man very closely. And you have to check your, your red cells. You have to understand the upper limit normal is less, it's gonna be just less than 18 and less than 54. And that's my cutoff, 52 and 17.6. You have to check to see if you have coronary artery disease with standard history and physical exam. Coronary artery disease, calcium scoring, echocardiography, vital signs. This I found to be an amazing case and I will continue to update the world on this case as time goes on as I care for this man and learn more. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.